All right. We, Ray and I usually shoot the shit for a couple minutes to like warm up and get in the groove before we start launching into recording. I like shooting shit. Yeah. And also taking piss. (laughs) These are two things that I don't understand why there are euphemisms for talking and talking about shit. (laughs) I will try to do my best to um, win the Monica Do Not Punch Your Mic challenge during this recording. But no promises. (laughs) I didn't realize that was a challenge. It is a challenge every time, and it is a challenge I frequently fail. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Yeah, occasionally I get all like, and then I slap my microphone. Yeah, I talk with my hands, and I often hit like the... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like lots of noise right now. (laughs) So many sound waves. (laughs) Welcome to Bonus Experience. We are a podcast with a deeper look at the play experience and the finer details of running and writing games. We are also queer people speaking with authority about games. Also, we swear you can die mad about it. You may have noticed that I did the whole intro by myself because hello, I'm Monica, Exalted Essence me- Mechanical de- mechanical develop- Developer. Ray, you look really different today. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying this new skincare routine. Uh, it's turned me into a completely different person. It's pretty nice. You should try it. Uh, actually, hi, I'm Danielle Lozon. I am also a <laughs> developer <laughs> and things. Ray, Ray's body double or voice double, I guess. I guess more accurate. Our synthetic Ray replacement. Uh, you're when we're done. You're gonna have to tell me where you can get some of that uh, doppelganger skin cream. <laughs> trade secrets you know oh, yeah 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 we'll do it off the air mm-hmm. so today with my synthetic ray replacement uh we're we're going to talk about uh what's the name of the game i mean uh naming your game <laughs> <laughs> right okay so why should i give a shit about what my name is what my game's name is <laughs> i mean it's a clarity thing right like you don't want your game to be called something that it's does that doesn't advertise at least some aspect of what it's about right like that's it's weird you also maybe don't want to advertise something that your game isn't about yeah uh and you also want it to be a thing that when people hear the title they go oh damn i want to try that um which is actually a place where i have to give credit to dungeons and dragons it really succeeds at oh. having a catchy name uh when you're like this game is called dungeons and dragons i'm like yeah i kind of want to know what's up with both of those things tell me more about these dungeons and these dragons do i get to meet the dragons what's going on tell me (laughs) yeah i often find that i like i really like the word fate yeah and i i like the concept of fate and destiny and i found that games are like the word fate is just a trick (laughs) <laughs> half the time it is actually a game about fate and destiny and half the time it's just evil hats branding <laughs> yeah i wanted to play through the fate of cthulhu what happens to him right nothing <laughs> nothing, nothing. right, right. <laughs> all right so bearing that in mind maybe we should talk about what sort of things you should consider when you're naming your game yeah so i i just definitely say that whenever you're trying to name a game you got to think about the fact that this is how you're selling the game. Most people look at names, they look at covers, they maybe read the back text on your book, but your game's name really needs to do some of the work up front to get people interested in what it is you have on sale for them. Yeah, your your title alongside the cover, which is another thing you really should think about, that's like its own episode. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, is is pretty much a person's first exposure to your game. Whether or not that book is physically present, because someone might say, hey, have you heard of Vampire? And they will be like, what's Vampire? Tell me more about it. I've seen a movie before. Do I get to be Blade? Uh, or, <laughs> or, not a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, or, you know, but yeah, you, know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. or, or they'll <laughs> see it in a store with its cool little fangly font and be like, yes, I do want to be a sexy Dracula. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I've also noticed, though, like, you could have a really descriptive name, 
like vampire like right. that describes exactly what's going to happen and you could have like, a really evocative name and that will attract customers. But then if your evocative name isn't actually what the game is about, it may leave them disappointed. A little like ordering something from Wish and then getting it in the mail. <laughs> like, why, yes, I do want to play a game about flame princesses. This sounds amazing. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, I also think that your name should probably be like a little short and punchy. You know, I, I've written a master's thesis and my name, like really the name of my master's thesis described exactly in detail what it was about. It was like two or three sentences long. <laughs> uh, so, you, but I wouldn't go that route for a game just because no one will say the whole thing. For example, you know, I don't know if you know that the game Masks is actually Masks a New Generation. I did not know that, actually. Yeah, because nobody says all that. Right. I mean, similarly, Vampire is not just titled Vampire. It's Vampire either the Masquerade or the Requiem. Right. So, you know, sometimes a subtitle is important. Sometimes a subtitle is important. And sometimes a subtitle makes your, your game name extraneously long. So, you know, <laughs> you just got to really think about what you're going for when you try to name a game. Because I think I think what I... Th think about a cool like a good name for a game i'm thinking about what is it telling me and and it does it have a nice mouth feel it's not a food really but you know words have nice mouth feel too they do they do <laughs> and, and so whenever i'm thinking about a nice mouth feel I, I need it to be short i need it to be punchy i need it to sound nice together yeah and if it doesn't do those things then people are going to trip over your name yeah i think you want it to i think i think the normal people words for that are euphonic Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute while you were talking. I was like, there is a word for this. It rolls off the tongue. I mean, I do like the idea of words uh, having mouth feel like they're, like they're, oh, wow, like they're a good food. <laughs> you know, and also, like, we're going to get into this a little bit later in the episode where we talk about good titles and how those are exemplary of, like, here's the thing that tells you what the fuck the game is about. But I'd only ever heard of masks as just masks. Yeah. And Masks alone sounds like it is generally just a superhero game, right? Yep. Yeah. But it's not. Masks is specifically a game about playing, like, the Teen Titans and other teenage heroes, some, some My Hero Academia right. shit. If you know it's Mask a New Generation, right. like, it, it tells you that right. that's Right, and it tells is, you right? exactly that, right. So, yeah, yeah that's, that was a good point. It, in a way that I wonder if Masks a New Generation is actually a good name because people do shorten it to Masks, which loses the teen the teen superhero element. Right. And so when you're trying to be like, yeah, Masks, it's this great superhero game. And people are thinking like, oh, we're going to play Justice League. And really, you're playing teen. Right. <laughs> Justice League, you're playing Teen Titans. You're playing the young kids who don't have agency. And it's and you're like, oh. Oh, Young okay. Justice. That was that show. I was young like, Justice. I was like, what was the show about the justice league with kids and it wasn't teen titans so i was like justice league jr no monica that's not the fuck it <laughs> amazing <laughs> tiny toons adventures <laughs> it's not that either no but <laughs> a, a good name yeah we're a little early on but let's do the mid-episode break because we have a lot to talk about in the back half um, yes which i will go ahead and do um, as that's usually my job. Well, usually Ray has to go, like, put a dog somewhere, and then I read the, <laughs> I read the whole mid-episode break. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you have to go put a dog somewhere, you can go do that right now. My dog has put herself in a corner, so... Okay, she's oh. put herself away. You're fine. Yes. Bonus experience in the mid-episode break room are brought to you by the Misdirected Mark Network. Danielle, please, please say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did it. I did it. <laughs> hey, become a BXP patron. Even $1 a month helps us keep the lights on, and we really appreciate it. Uh, we release an extended episode for patrons and do patron-only live shows. Uh, they're stupid, and they go on for a really long time, and we let you yell things at us in the chat room. It's pretty fun. Uh, BXP is also sponsored by Nerdy Kepi. Uh, shop for queer swag at nerdykepi.com. That's N-E-R-D-Y-K-E-P-P-I-E.com. And use code BXPCAST at checkout for 10% off. This offer never expires, so go buy a ton of cool queer masks immediately. Like, pause the episode and go do it right now. Go, 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 go. Are you back? Great. 
If you like BXB, you will like The Lounge. Doc finds the best, brightest, the most fun game designers and sits down to have a cool chat with them. You never know what conversation is going to come up in The Lounge. Do you have you ever been on The Lounge? No. You should be, though. I'll tell Doc. Okay. Anyway. All right. Let's Please get back to it. send me over there. All right. <laughs> Now that we're getting back to it, let's talk about some examples of games with A plus names. All right. Uh, let's do hard mode and don't mention any White Wolf Ronix Path game. Okay, but we're only going to do this if you pay me in imaginary accolades at the end of it. All right, fine. Um, Margaret, put the part where I satisfy Danielle's praise kink in the extended episode. Thank you so much. <laughs> Be here all episode. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to throw out some game names that after I originally thought up this list, I thought, but is that actually really a good name? So this is going to be a fun, a fun list. So okay. the Spire. All right. In which you play a game that's literally centered around a giant spire. Yeah. That's the name of the place it takes place in. Yes. Yes. Mouse Guard. In yeah. which you play mice who are also guards. guards. <laughs> Blades in the Dark. In which you play people who are shadowy and in the dark, literally, <laughs> literally the entire the, time. Yep. Uh, I had Masks a New Generation on here because I think Masks a New Generation, the whole thing, is actually a good name. Although that length of name issue that we talked about earlier may may bump that down into the not so great name. Maybe an A- minus and 7 A+. Plus. Okay. And this is, again, another one that I, I felt this way about and now I don't feel that way about any longer, which is Feng Shui, action movie role-playing, which is literally action movie role-playing, but everybody calls it Feng Shui. And if I hear Feng Shui, I'm like, what? I mean, just the title <laughs> Feng Shui sounds like this is an art game about moving around furniture for good vibes. Right. <laughs> but then you add action movie role-playing and suddenly you know exactly what the game is about. Right. All right, Tales from the Loop, in which you play games set in a place called The Loop. <laughs> All right. Witch Fated Souls, in which you play witches who are fated. Uh, souls is just a nice add-on. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fancy way of referring to, like, people. Yeah. Yeah. And then a, another game by that same company, Afterlife Wandering Souls, in which you play a soul who is wandering around in the afterlife. So the, the souls in the second one is literal. Literal. Yes. yes. Okay. First one is just general term for people. Yes. Second one, right. no, literally literal, souls. Literally, <laughs> literally, you've died. You've gone to the afterlife. You're wandering around as your soul. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So my suggestions for this list are Fiasco, which is literally a game about things going wrong. Yeah. 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 Only War, which is the game about playing the Imperial Guard in war in the Warhammer setting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is only War. War, yeah. Following that up with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Uh, which is the role-playing game about playing in the Warhammer Fantasy world, which is now called Age of Sigmar Soulbound, which is not as good a name. No. No. Though if you know Warhammer, that does make sense, but like that it certainly doesn't have the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay punchiness to it no uh through the breach which while that is the you know proprietary role-playing game for malifo you literally go through the breach and you are supposed to play through that at the beginning of the game and that is like an important part of it All it right. is literally about going through the breach and winding up living in this other place so it gets it on nice. for that yeah. yeah stars without number is a space game heck yeah. i would have never guessed <laughs> I mean, it's not about counting the stars, but it is about playing in space. Well, you can't count them. They don't have numbers. numbers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a space game. And that tells you it's a space game. Yeah, it does. Uh, Godbound is literally about people fighting towards divinity. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I just, your face is, was you were just like, mm -hmm. it was just a big <laughs> nod. <laughs> uh, Worldwide Wrestling is a game about playing re wrestlers in a. What? Yep. Uh, this one, like, you kind of have to know the genre, but I, I'm i going to give credit to Pasión de las Pasiones, which is a parody of a telenovela name. And if you are familiar with that, yes, the joke is obvious. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know Brandon when I picked it up at Metatopia, 
and oh, I'm I'm yeah. sort of passingly familiar with that whole genre, and like I just could not stop fucking laughing at it. It's so funny. Oh yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, Torchbearer, which is a dungeon crawl RPG in which at least one person is going to be the person in front of the party carrying the light source. And also, what's really great about Torchbearer is that carrying the torch, being the light source, is actually important to the game. Yes. Like, having a light source, keeping track of the light source, being the Torchbearer is important. Yeah. Yes. We'll also give a nod to Legends of the Wulin, which is literally about playing wuxia, shansha heroes in a martial arts film role-playing game. You have to kind of know what the word Wulin means, but if you do or are familiar with that genre, that's very obvious what that game is about. Yes. <laughs> so we, we, I discredited White Wolf and Onyx Path games because they kind of, for the most part, literally tell you exactly what they're about on the cover of the book. Vampire, the Masquerade, Werewolf, the Forsaken, Mage, the Awakening, Scion, second edition, wait. <laughs> <laughs> The second. The what? second. Hang on. Uh, and maybe even Exalted. Yeah, so I'd argue that unless I know what you're exalting, Exalted doesn't actually tell me shit about that game. <laughs> I mean, all right, to be fair, Scion doesn't really either. Just means... Could like, be, yeah, what are yeah, you, the what Scion, Scion of? of? Right. That could very easily be like a Houses of the Blooded type game, too, yeah. with a name Scion. But, yeah. but let's we did talk about like front and back cover text. So let's assume that someone is looking at an Exalted or a Scion book in a store or hell on a drive through because they show you the covers, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So let's assume you, you're looking at this cover and you're like, Exalted, look at this cool picture of a person who's glowing. Let me pick it up and flip it over. <laughs> and if you sure. flip it up, pick it up and flip it over the back cover text, a quick read of it pretty clearly lets you know that the things you are playing in this game are called the Exalted. Now, sure. everything about Exalted is a whole nother animal, and I don't know, maybe I should, maybe I should do a podcast about it. Wait, that sounds like a great idea. It does, you should definitely it? do that. Definitely yeah. should do that. Should do that. Also, hey, now that I'm thinking about it, Lancer sort of falls into this category, too, um, because yeah. just, just the word Lancer alone really makes me think about well, a person who uses lances <laughs> or fights with spears or does some other kind of like thrusting attack thingy. But if you read the back cover text, it's like, oh, OK, that's the name of the mech pilots. Cool. Yeah. So actually that came up because I had Lancer on my list with a question mark. because I'm like, I think that Lancer is actually a fantastic name for this game, because when I first heard it, I was like, oh, is that a game about mechs? And people were like, heck, yeah, it is. And I was like, well, shit, uh, of course it is. <laughs> Because somehow the zeitgeist of mech names and how people like name mechs told me that Lancer was absolutely a game about piloting mechs without having to read anything else about it. Huh. I, I mean, I think I blame leaning going like Lancer. That's a JRPG unit entirely <laughs> on playing too much Frembles. So <laughs> anyway, so we've those have been some really good examples on some some explanations of like this vampire is a game where you play vampires by the way how about we dish on some bad examples Ooh, what to pick on first okay so i'm gonna pick on this first all right uh because it's probably the the most egregious of the thing i don't like about names which is wicked fantasy okay and it's called wicked fantasy because john wick's name is wick like his last name is wick and then ha <laughs> wicked fantasy it's just a pun it's literally just a pun it's a it's it's a pathfinder setting <laughs> there's, there's nothing no to do with wickedness in any way shape or form yeah, it's just a pun yeah i'm disappointed that there's nothing wicked about this fantasy because the title of that sounds like um like oh, dark fairy tales yeah or like dark right? fairy tales are like some sort of uh evil based campaign thing yeah, that's maybe yeah. not crap right and uh and then its follow-up is there's a fate version right and so it, it it double it doubles up on wicked fate so one it's about has neither to do of with, those things <laughs> it's nothing to do with destinies goddamn you fate games and then also it is not wicked in any way shape or form i mean maybe like wicked cool but not that no <laughs> wicked not fate same. not about either of those things not about either of those things dungeon world is in fact not about a world that is just a giant dungeon there are dungeons in it because it is a D&D knockoff but sure it is sure. not literally about the dungeon world no uh lamentations of the flame princesses neither has 
flame princesses or anything that they are lamenting about. Yeah, what's she so sad about? I Do I get to make her feel... Lamentations of the Flame Princess sounds like an art LARP where one person play, plays the Flame Princess and everyone else has to figure out why she's sad. You know, it, it could also just be, like, this really cool RPG about, like, flame princesses who are, like, lamenting their, you know, the the evil deeds of others and, like, their, like, take up swords and arms. And, and, like, it's a really evocative name, but it's terrible for a game, in my opinion, because, like, I don't actually know what that game is about. Alternatively, Lamentations of the Flame Princess could be a Lady Blackbird-style game. Where yes. everyone plays a very specific role when one of you is playing the flame princess who is sad about something. Yes. Lady Blackbird, also a game with a name that tells you at least something about- I mean, does it though? Because like Lady Blackbird, like, are you playing Lady Blackbird? I mean, if you are, that's kind of cool. I mean, you are. She's one, okay, of the, good. she's one of the important characters that you can play. More on that. Is, I guess. It, uh, yes. is it a pirate game? Because it sounds like it's a pirate game. Uh, sh it does have some piratey themes, but it's more like- I don't know how to describe the, the characters are in like an airship and it's not really like a steampunk airship. It's like, are they sky tyrants? Yeah. Like, just, there's like okay. sky punk type, whatever. I, you know, did you have a whole podcast about not throwing punk? punk in I words? did. It's <laughs> yes, I did. I don't sky punk sky punk. Mm, can't just put the word punk at the end of every word. I'm I gonna write that. a sky punk name All now. Right. Sorry. Write, cool. Write a sky punk game. Take it. It's yours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> continuing on, uh, GURPS. I mean, GURPS it abbreviates horribly, but it, it what is a general universal role playing system? Right. Which I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, general. Let's let's get let me give GURPS one tiny piece of credit in that general universal role playing system tells me more about what that system is meant to do than cortex does yes oh yeah <laughs> it tells me more about what it its system is trying to do than literally any other system name out there genesis you're creating stuff yeah just two of the things two of the general systems i can think of off the top of my head that do not have general universal role-playing system in their name oh man there's but also gurps fate. is awful all oh, right fate. fate yeah 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 fate <laughs> all right uh oh Another one. Uh, big yeah. eyes, small mouth. Like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the name for your game? I mean, that was hilarious in 1999. Yeah. Actually, I, I know I picked on Dungeon World, but really anything world. Unless wow. the thing you were talking about is literally the game world that you're talking about. Throwing the system's name at the end of it, like mm -hmm. fate or world, is not actually like good at telling, conveying what the game is about. It's conveying the system that you're play oh we're playing in the apocalypse world system but we're not even they're they don't even call it that anymore so like calling things dungeon world or whatever water i don't know there's some other ones <laughs> the, the savage worlds that doesn't tell me anything mm -hmm. although savage worlds doesn't use the power by the apocalypse anyway moving on yeah i have more games to pick on actually morkborg <laughs> like i love that game and i am sorry that it's it's name doesn't tell me what it is its name translates to Dark Castle or Dark Fort. But it's a game about playing, like, a metal band. It's not a game sort about of. playing a metal band. I it's, know it's not. <laughs> it is a game about playing really weird shit. Yes. And let's be real, Dark Castle or Dark Fort does not also tell you what the game is about because you don't, like... You're not doing those things. You're not doing those things. It is like the most death metal version of a dungeon crawler you'll yes. ever see. And it is the most stylish RPG I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it drips with death metal. Yes. And so its name is honestly on brand for death metal. Right. A doom metal album of a game is yes. uh, something that somebody said about it. Because I was like, oh, wait, Merkborg has a translation. Mer yeah, it's Merkberg, Borg, Merkborg, because the Merk M-O-R oh, okay. with the umlaut is pronounced like the mer in murder, oh, according okay. to their Merkberg. Kickstarter. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> you have one more on here. I do. We talked yeah. about that before we talked about Merkborg. <laughs> Merkborg. Uh, Merkborg. <laughs> Sorry. It's a great game, actually. Everybody should buy it, but like for the names of games, like it's, it's not necessarily Yeah, we're, I, we're just ragging on names. We're not ragging on the content. No. Uh, so my, my last one I have on here, because you have more, is yeah. uh, Zweihander, Grim, and Perilous. 
So sword name, grim, perilous, smush them all together. Here's a game. If I didn't know what this was about, I would have no fucking clue what this game was about other than you're carrying a big two-hander around. It's very grim and kind of dangerous. <laughs> and also perilous. I mean, I assume that the part grim and perilous is accurate. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure why. I, like, Zweihander is a cool name, but it's a weapon. Like, it's literally like broadsword. Like, that might actually be a decent name for a game, too. If your game is about broadswords, I don't know. Yeah, uh, the title gives me big Warhammer vibes, and maybe that's intentional, and maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't actually know anything about. Zwei it Hander. is absolutely Zwei intentional. Zweihander, Grim and Perilous. All right. Well, I guess I got it then. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like that's more my osmosis of and like my my embeddedness in the RPG scene where like was Warhammer Grim and Perilous. Oh yeah, so this was worth some Warhammer shit. Like that's that's just yeah right. <laughs> like but you're that's like just what that means like, to me. You're like 15 year old. You walks into a game store and goes, "What is this?" Right. <laughs> like. Half the time, you wouldn't even maybe know what a Zweihander was. was. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so here's my noms for names that aren't about... <laughs> game names that aren't about the things that are in it. Uh, yeah. Burning Wheel. I don't think there's a wheel that burns. In yeah, I don't game. think... I think it's supposed to, like, refer to the passage of time or, like, yes. that sort of thing. And I, I, I get it. Like, please don't come at me for being like, you don't understand the metaphor. And, like, <laughs> I do, actually. But, like remember that you're trying to do this to sell the game so if someone doesn't understand that the burning wheel is like the cycle of time or like the the repeat instances of history or whatever that is i would assume that the burning wheel is important in a way that like the torchbearer is important yes like either as like a fixture of the setting or something like is the burning like did the sun become a burning wheel tell me more about this yeah yeah which i don't think is the case no dark heresy which has nothing to do with committing the dark heresy and it has nothing to do with like role playing people with different religious beliefs during the establishment of the church of rome uh yeah so so if i if i were just out of context have no idea what dark heresy was and i just like we're gonna play a game called dark heresy right i'd be like oh shit we're about to play like that fucking bad pope right <laughs> Right. We're going to we're going to be playing like some political, like sociopolitical game in which like you're committing some kind of like really deep, dark heresy. There's probably going to be like some exorcisms and some demon summoning. Right. And like there's some like angels versus demons bullshit. Or maybe even we're going to be playing through like like we're going to be demons or angels and we're going to be committing heresies. Like I, I have so many like postmodern or like modern world like images of like urban fantasy stuff going on with dark heresy that are just not what this game is all right uh, now we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to meet back up and do a bonus episode where we just redesign games based on the names that we think they should have <laughs> do we have time to do that a little bit here yeah cause... i think we do we can do that at the end we'll do it for bonus content um <laughs> we'll do a little we'll do a little jam at the end yeah um, but dark heresy is the like bottom tier entry level uh warhammer 40k role-playing game where you play oh, things like the tech shit. priest who's just <laughs> getting their training wheels cybernetics and like the lowly cleric who's going to eventually become a badass inquisitor but right now you you're armed with a pen and your sense of righteousness uh and it's like you are sort of the, you're the shit tier of the Inquisition, and you do have to root out the heresy, but you're probably going to fail at it. It has nothing to do with any of the other much cooler things that we just talked about. That's so sad. <laughs> I own old copies of it. I think, I don't know if there's been a new edition. I believe the rights were owned by Fantasy Flight. We know how Fantasy Flight handles things. I uh, wouldn't recommend. Uh, anyway, uh, Shadowrun is Are not about... in the shadows? I mean, I guess kind of. It's not about shadows running. No. It doesn't really have a lot to do with literal shadows, more metaphorical shadows. But I don't entirely get, like, cyberpunk ne'er-do-wells just from the name Shadowrun. You know what? Shadowrun doesn't tell me what? that this game is both cyberpunk mashed with fantasy. Yes, no, not at all. There's that. Like, like... Okay, okay, all right. Sure, I can I can get maybe, like, a Dark Wave album, like the way Merkborg is, like... D&D &D yeah. by way of doom metal 
okay, I see Shadowrun as cyberpunk by way of Darkwave, like the, yeah, the music yeah. type. But I, but like, if you're like, we're going to play this game called Shadowrun, and I'm like, cool, I'm going to be this like turbo killer with a cool visor and a laser gun. Like, that's what I, that's what I think of when I hear that. But like, and then someone's like, I'm going to play a troll. And I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Shadowrun does not convey that, like, you can play fantasy creatures in this. No, not at all. Like that, where in Shadowrun did you tell me that this was a fucking fantasy mashup game? (laughs) Right? Nowhere. 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 Um, Nowhere. Iron Heroes. Which, as much as I love Iron Heroes, and I hate how much I love Iron Heroes, it is not a game about playing people made of metal, no. which is really taking that very much literally and at face value for comedic purposes. Um, but it is <laughs> also like about people who like use iron weapons exclusively or shape iron. Like Iron Heroes is not about playing badass blacksmiths. Is it about playing in, in the Iron Age? Not really. It's in fact, I believe it is supposed to be like, that that doesn't really have a setting like the, it has a paragraph where it's like we're t- we're like just shy of prehistoric badasses like oh in a in a semi non magical fantasy setting and i believe like cuz one of the guys one of the character classes is all about wearing like a shit ton of armor and having a bunch of weapons and so i'm pretty sure all of those things are intended to be made of steel so like even iron age <laughs> doesn't quite apply it's iron in the sense of like tough and badass and like because there's no magic everybody's badass martial characters yeah okay it's metaphorical i get it don't don't at me but like iron heroes does sound like a game about playing either people who like stomp around in cool huge suits of armor right Or, or 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 like badass blacksmiths yeah yeah so there's a game that I did we haven't talked about, but I want okay. to talk about it because right. I think it is it runs into the because I don't know what that is, it sends the wrong message, but is actually the correct and good name for a game. Okay. And that's Night Witches. Okay. So if you don't know anything about the historical context of Night Witches, then the words Night Witches together sounds like you're playing some like Game about witches magic in the night, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like literal magic users who, you know, are... Doing magic. Doing magic at night. Maybe they're <laughs> dark witches. I'm not sure. But night witches is the, the term for these, like, women in World War II, like, biplanes dropping, like, bombs on Germans. Uh, <laughs> like, and so you're, like, playing, like, Russian fighter pilot women... <laughs> <laughs> and who are the night witches like it's a very appropriate name that is what they were called and you know you're you're you're, you're playing a game about these like literal night witches but if you are ignorant of that part of history and haven't ever heard of them before then you're like oh like the cover of the book just has like some like night witches in russian and then a biplane like by a moon <laughs> And so I'm still like, if I didn't know what Night Witches were, I'd be like, I don't, I, I am so confused by this title. And not everybody has heard of them, right? They're Russian. Right. Yeah. And not everybody is a World War II history buff. Yeah, exactly. Like some people, absolutely. They, they, they could go either way for those people. Right. They see the cover. They're like, oh man, this is gonna be badass for people like me who had never heard of them until I heard of this game. I was like, what is this game? That sounds cool. This game is not what I thought this game was going to be this about. This game is not about cool. witches at all. No. <laughs> Why is there a plane on this? Do I get a plane familiar? <laughs> right, but I can't, like, I'm not picking on that game name. I don't think it's no, a bad no, no. game name. It is literally what it is on the 10, but it also can be confusing. Right. I think there's a lot of games that fit in that middle ground. Yeah, we're like, I think a lot of games, so we didn't talk about this when we were, like, taking the piss on Exalted. We're like, there's a lot of games like Exalted and Scion, The Spire, Night Witches. I mean, Torchbearer, we can throw in there too. Uh, trying to sure. think of some other things. We're like, the title is a thing that's important to the setting. Yes. But is also just its own thing. And so can be confusing. Right. Like, the Scions are what you play in Scion. They are the children of the gods. Like, they're some Percy Jackson shit. And they are called Scions. And so making that the title of the game, this is the thing you play makes sense which is why i had the whole like back cover text point 
or like mm-hmm. blurb tech point. Because if you're looking at this like on drive through and you're thinking about whether or not you want to pick up Exalted and you're not really sure what it's about or what you play. I mean, like the title tells you what you play. You play the Exalted, period. But what does that mean? What does that mean? That should be what's in your back cover text where it's like, oh, this is yeah, this is what I do. Yeah, you get too far into back cover text, though, and suddenly you're like, well, do names even matter? Right. I'm like, well, I mean, we already talked about why names matter, because I don't have back cover text to explain to you what Scion is about. Right. But the moment I say, hey, would you like to play a game of Scion? Right. I have already evoked that you're going to be playing somebody who is the best at something or is the chosen, like, descendant of someone. Right. And then I'm like, it's a game about playing the children of gods. Oh, okay. Bam. Cool. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, like, I wish I had the, the capacity to, to, like, study this. But I think most people get into games because other people tell them to get into it. Like, yeah. one of your friends is like, we're going to play Scion. And the person who's maybe never played a game before or has only ever played 5th edition at their local gaming store is like, what is Scion? And so then, instead of you being the back cover text, you, the person who is pitching, become the back cover text, and you're like, the Scions are the children of the gods, you play a a, a hero who's the son of Odin, Thor, yep. pick your favorite. Yeah, and I think, you know, the easier it is for people to describe your game and what your game is about, the the better. But your name, if it starts to evoke those things and is not incongruous with what you're doing means that people are going to grasp it faster. So if I say, hey, we're going to play Vampire the Masquerade, and you're like, cool, what's that game about? And I'd be like, well, you hunt and kill vampires. You're like, okay, I mean, I guess, but that's not awful, right? But if the answer was, you know, and that's not what the Vampire the Masquerade is, right? If the answer was instead, oh, yeah, you play werewolves that kick ass. Like, why is it called Vampire the Masquerade? (laughs) Right, right, right. Like, people get stuck on that. Like, why is it called that? I don't understand. Right? And I I think there's some other game names where it's like, oh, man, the the Beanstalk, uh, Fantasy Flight, like, sci-fi game. Like, Shadows of the Beanstalk. That sounds like a fantasy game based on Jack and the Beanstalk, where, like, Maybe some people play humans and some people play giants. You have to work out your differences. Yeah, no, it is. uh... (laughs) Is the beanstalk a thing in setting? Yeah, yeah. So the beanstalk is what they call their sky elevator. Right. Okay. To get you to the the moon. All right. Okay. So you're you're playing in the shadow of that. It's their like Android setting, like their their sci fi setting. Right. Okay. That like Netrunner is is based in. Right. Okay. Right. But. And it's Android, Shadow of the Beanstalk. So you have Android on top on top of that. Right. To like give you an idea. All right. But Android makes me think about playing robots in the same way that vampire makes me think I'm playing vampires. Right. But you're not playing robots. Right. I don't know if you can play robots actually. D- let me don't <laughs> I think you can maybe play an AI or a robot, but that's not the uh, Okay, right. That's, that's it, the point. The point is that's not, not the it, point. This is not some Detroit become human game. No. <laughs> It is It is not playing androids in the shadow of a beanstalk. It is playing a cyberpunk, like, sci-fi future game in which you're probably, like, normal sci-fi people who are, like, hackers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, like, it's not, like, the most evocative name. No. And, I, and, like, you see how long it took me to explain to you what the game was about. Right, you, you did, did take you a little bit. And part of that was because we had to take a break to make funny conjecture, but... Right. But also, you know, if it's not, if, if the game is incongruous with what your name says it is, then people balk. Like, they're like, wait a minute, what? Right. Because I had this, I had this preconceived notion in my brain about what this was going to be about based on the thing you just said. And now you're telling me it's something different and I have to change gears. Right. People make logical leaps and conclusions the moment you start talking. You say a name, they suddenly have a picture or image in their head. They want to know more about it. You start describing something wildly different and it, it it's a non-starter. Right. It's suddenly I don't understand what you're talking about anymore. Even though the, you're speaking English, you're using the right words, it's just not going to convey as well. So you have to consider that you don't take your evocative name and make it about something that it's completely not. <laughs> right. right. So uh, what's the takeaway here? Uh, naming things is hard. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, naming things is also advertisement, which is um, hard. Yes, marketing is hard. It turns out, like, I'm terrible at naming things. Like, I can point out, like, I don't think that's a great name. And I think that's a good name. But, like, I'm not saying I'm great at coming up with good names on my own. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure I'm going to give myself credit for that either. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> when I was, uh, like, years and years and years ago, when I was trying to write fiction, because that was the only kind of writing I knew how to do, I would try to come up with character names and I wanted them to sound like cool fantasy character names. So the way I would come up with fantasy names was I would catwalk on my own keyboard. So I would just like slam my fingers down on the keyboard. And then I would look in that like junk that appeared and try to find a cool looking like syllable to pull out to be a name. How'd that work out for you? Uh, it, I got some interesting names out of that, actually. <laughs> you want to share any of them? I don't remember, I don't remember any them. Of them. Okay. I've slept since then. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> We're talking like Monica. We are talking. Listen, like almost twenty years ago. Listen, who, who among us has forgotten the name of our cringy OCs from our teen years? Definitely this person. <laughs> <laughs> A lot has happened to me since then. It's fair. Same. I do still remember some of my cringy names, which I'm not going to share. Not even in bonus content. So, <laughs> <laughs> not even in bonus content. So it is almost seven o'clock here and I should probably wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Just gotta go eat. Fair. Fair. If you want to find more of the show, you can check us out at bxpcast.com, part of the Misdirected Mark Network. You are required to think. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to email us, you can shoot us an email at bonusexpcast at gmail.com. And if you want to add us with some weird shit on Twitter, you can hit us up at bonusexpcast. Danielle, where can they find you? Uh, I am online as impernius which i won't spell uh i-m-p-e-r-n-i-o-u-s i won't spell uh, here I'll, I'll spell it <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh you can also find me on my website daniellelozon.com which will probably be in a link somewhere i will try to remember to put it in the show notes yeah okay that's it, it. that's yeah. where you can find me okay twitter is at impernius so i spelled that already yeah cool if you want to follow me i mean you're probably already because you're listening to this uh i am at zenith sun on twitter uh, and i don't have a website it's too much work <laughs> all right that's why that's... I somebody build it for me <laughs> <laughs> all right that's it we're done everybody get out let's go go bye bye i gotta go eat dinner change it if you want to Do I have to do this? Ugh, fine. Bonus Experience is written and produced by Monica and Ray. And edited by Margaret. Our logo and art is by Nino Studios. Find her on Facebook and Instagram. Our theme song is Reuse Noise with the Light by CDK. And is used under the attribution, non-commercial, creative commons license. BXP is part of the Misdirected Mart Network. Uh, I'm not reading this. Fuck it. Bye.